What's going on everybody and welcome back to Johnny K Picks and in this video I'll be going over my full card picks and predictions along with the bets that I already have or I am looking at for UFC Vegas 99 we are almost to 100 Hernandez versus Pereira now first things first please hit that like button for me subscribe if you are new or if you just haven't yet turn on the notifications so you know when I put out my videos when we go live on Wednesday nights, all that good stuff. And leave some comments below how well you did last card, uh, what bets you're looking at, uh, what fighters you like here. And also check out my Patreon, patreon.com slash johnnykpix. Put out all my early UFC content, uh, time prop parlay cheat sheets, betting cheat sheets, uh, NFL bets from time to time. you got a UFC survivor pool going. So if you're into all that, you can join for free or you can support for $5.99 a month uh so yeah last card um interesting a lot of fun fights um didn't like it from a betting perspective whatsoever but we will get to that here shortly but let's go over that real quick um just some of the fights here because there was some good ones carpenter versus uh roca um very good fight carpenter clearly had the advantage on the mat and as i said that in my breakdown and he clearly won uh by submission um you could see it it was gonna pretty much be like that after in the first round you knew that Clayton was going to go for those takedowns and just outwork him in the grappling, and he did, and he got the rear naked choke, so good win from him. Next fight, Haddon versus Argetta. Um, wasn't super confident in this pick, but Haddon made it look fairly easy. He was able to stuff the majority of Argetta's takedowns, and if Argetta did get taken down, or get, did get the takedown, he didn't do much with it. Um, Haddon was way better on the feet, like we all probably thought, but... Um, good win from Haddon. I kind of like what I see from him, actually. So this was a good test for him, and I like it. And we'll see what happens with him next. Palastri versus McKenna. Palastri was just bigger, stronger, more volume. Wasn't able to get um, taken down until the last um, last round. But again, this was a split decision somehow, which it was a clear 29-28 Palastri. McKenna did win the third round, but McKenna didn't win round one or two at all. So the judges are still a little wild, but at least they got the side right. So we'll give them that. But this fight should not have been a split. Tafa versus Shroff. Um, both these guys aren't good. Uh, Tafa was able just to outlast him because he wasn't on four days short notice. But any other guy more than likely probably would have put out Tafa um, in a full camp. So, I mean, Tafa got away with this one, let's be honest. But um, good win for him. <laughs> I got to say good win because he won. So he got the knockout. But, uh, yeah, both these guys aren't really that great. I would like to see Sharaf, though, at a full camp because he did look dangerous in the first round. But then he was just done after that. So we'll see what happens with them. Uh, Temba versus Nico Price. Nico Price, I think he's donezo for shunzo. Um, I know he's only 35, but, man, he's got a lot of miles. And Temba looked very good on the feet. Um, he kind of looked a little sl like he was slowing down a bit in the third round, but he was able to push through it, get some takedowns here and there, and uh, win that way. So that's that's... He Temba's looking better and better, so we'll see what happens with him next. Great win from Sabatini. Um, I thought he would have the slight grappling edge, but little did I know that he had a major grappling edge against uh, Jonathan Pierce. I had Pierce in my pick. No bets in this fight. Glad I didn't, but um, great win from Sabatini. He was able just to out-grapple Jonathan Pierce for the, basically the whole round until he gave up, gave up the rear naked choke. Uh, Timura versus Vergara. Vergara again ran away, um, but... Razman did not let him off the hook, and he did get that knockout. That guy is little, but, man, he is powerful and super quick and super explosive with his striking. Um, has He's just like a little uh, um, little like monster, if you want to say. I don't even know what else to say. So I like what I saw from him. He's going to be small in some of his fights if he moves on up, but he has that explosiveness, so he'll always be live. So great win. Uh, D Rod versus Alex Murrow. Let's be honest, both these guys are done. Th I did not like what I saw from any of these guys. Like, Moreno looked good in the first, I think he won the first, second round was close. D Rod probably won the third. Was it was a split decision. I, I mean, I thought D Rod won 29 28. I did pick Moreno because I was fading D Rod. And Mur D I mean, anyone could probably beat D Rod except Alex Moreno. So, um, fading both of these, these guys again. Um, I just took the dog because I just thought it was going to be a closer fight, and it was a close fight. So went to split. I did think D Rod won, but again, both these guys I think are done. Grant Dawson versus uh, Hafa Garcia. I mean, I thought Dawson would win. I thought he'd win by decision, though. 
but he got the ground and pound knockout in the second round. So good win from him. He got a finish. Uh, maybe he's not that boring after all, but we knew he was going to have the better grappling. If he got the fight to the mat and he did, and he won. So good win. Chidi versus Jared Gooden. You know, Chidi looked good in there. The only thing was missing was the finish, but Jared Gooden is a very hard guy to finish. He's only been finished twice in his career. It was both on in the regional scene, which is weird, but he's never been finished in the UFC. But Chidi had good knees up against the clinch. He was dominating the clinch all fight. And um, yeah, easy win from him. Uh, Park versus Tavares. I mean, close fight again. Do I think it should have went to split? Probably not. Probably Park won 29-28, but it did. And um, yeah, Tavares won the first round and... Round two was the closest, and then round, Park, I thought, round one, round three. So, again, I did pick Tavares. I had plus three and a half spread for Tavares because I knew he'd win one round. But, um, again, at least they got the decision right again. And another split here, which I didn't think it was should have been, but Brandon Royval gets it done with Tatsuro Tyra. Man, Bro Royval was making me sweat my bets for him, um, but... You know, he was able to get it done. I don't think it should have been a split decision. It was clear 48, 47, Roy Val. You know who won each round. There wasn't any doubt. Um, but again, when judge see something different. So that's that was three splits this card. Um, one, two, yeah, three splits, and I thought they were all pretty clear. One, yeah, actually four splits. I thought they were all pretty clear. Um, uh, maybe one of them you could have been a split, but I thought they were all pretty clear, to be honest. But it is what it is. Um, I'm, you know, Tatsuro is gonna be champion one day. He's that good. It's just he ran into Roy Val, where he's at his prime, and he's he's very tough for a five round fight. If this was a three round fight, Tatsuro probably would win this nine out of ten times. But it was five rounds. We've seen Brandon Roy Val go five rounds. We haven't seen Tyro go five rounds. Tyro looked like he was gassing a bit. Uh, I think it was round three or four. I can't remember. And then round five, he just couldn't get the takedowns because I think he was just a little too gassed. And Roy Val was able to do more damage and actually get a reversal on him and do damage when he was on top. So good win from Roy Val. We'll see what happens with him next. Maybe he gets the winner of uh, Pantoja and the new uh, new guy that they got from uh, Risen, I believe. So all, all in all, fun fight, uh, fun uh, fight card. So for my picks, I went nine and three. Uh, like I said, I had Tavares, Morono, and Pierce were my losing um, picks. But for my bets, I uh, tweeted out that I hate all of my bets because I just wasn't confident in them, to be honest. And I, the only thing I was really confident in was the uh, Alazan, but that fight fell through because of uh, Frem missed weight. So all of my bets were all messed up. I wasn't feeling super confident. I told everybody not to back, um, back any of these or tail, but look what happened. Uh, I actually uh, swept... My bets go figure. I had Roy Val in a couple. Um, I had him early in the week at plus 170. I, I probably should have waited, but I saw the plus 260. I had to throw a little bit more down because that line was, I thought the line was crazy wide at plus 170, or honestly. Um, I had, like I said, Team Rav, that bet was um, paired up with Alhazan. I had Carpenter, that was also paired up with Alhazan. So that ruined two parlays right there, but they came through, got the win. And then I want my other two parlays here too. So I ended up winning um, 7.19 units, so a pretty good day. I, al I also hit a big parlay that I didn't post, but I did post after I won because anytime I do those fun parlays, like 10-leg parlays for a bonus boost, and I, and I don't post it, it ends up hitting. So it is what it is, but that was a, it was a fun night. I just think the MMA gods were um, paying me back from last card because I should have had a very good night. And... Um, Again, I had a very good night tonight, so that's all good. They, they made it up to me. Thank you. Appreciate it. Keep keep the train rolling here. So let's go into UFC Vegas 99. We got 11 fights. I don't think any of them were canceled because Elise or Alice was able to find a replacement. But we got first fight, Rebellus Desplain versus Austin Lane. And yeah, uh, Despain is a massive guy. He's Taekwondo Olympic guy, uh, dangerous hands, good striking, good kicks. Um, he does keep his hands a little low. He's very dangerous early. If he does get taken down, um, you know, it's not the greatest. He's not the greatest at getting back up. But luckily for him, Austin Lane's not really a great wrestler. Um, he can go for takedowns. He used to be an NFL player. 
Um, but he doesn't really have that jujitsu and all that stuff. But, you know, he's got solid striking, too. He can be hittable. He's got a very big head, so he's very hittable. Um, he's got those jumping attacks, knees, um, all that good stuff. But, uh, yeah, I got to go Rebellus here. Um, I just think Austin Lane is too hittable on the feet. Um, and I and also I think he's been finished in all of his lo- five losses in some way. He's been knocked out five times. So all five of his losses have been knockouts. Not the greatest there. So give me Rebellus to win. I'm probably going to say first round knockout. Um, I think both these guys are going to bring it in the first round. I just think Austin Lane's going to get touched. Uh, next one here ooh, is going to be uh, Alice Ardeline versus uh, Melissa Martinez. And yeah, Martinez is taking this fight on somewhat short notice, but Ardeline's, a, you know, she's a well rounded fighter. She has good striking, pushes forward, doesn't mind getting into a brawl. Uh, good power in her hands. Sometimes she could be a little sloppy. Uh, she did lose her last fight, if you want to say. She did take that fight on short notice against uh, Shauna Bannon. But honestly, I think um, Ardeline might have won that fight. Let's be honest. But it is what it is. Um, also, I believe that was in London or something like that. So hmm, go figure. Uh, but Martinez, like I said, taking the fight on short notice. But she's a good striker, too. She throws a ton of eye and very quick on her feet. Okay, power. She can grapple, but she mainly wants to keep it on the feet. And then she only, she has okay takedown defense. She hasn't fought in two years, which is a little bit worrisome. I think she had an injury, if I'm not mistaken. But, um, yeah, I think this fight could play out very close. I think Martinez can maybe uh, land more shots. But I think um, Alice can land the harder shots or the moments, if you want to say, and probably get some takedowns. And that could help her out a lot here, too. So I'm just going to take a shot on the dog with Alice. Um, not very confident, to be honest. I probably wouldn't bet this fight whatsoever. Um, but if you're going to give me a 50-50 fight and um, it's a plus 130, I'm just going to go with the dog. So um, Ardeline's the pick. I'm going to say by decision. I think it could be a very close decision as well. So probably, like I said, probably going to stay away from this one. But I'm just going to go with the dog here. This one's crazy. We'll get to it. Jessica Penne versus Elise Reed. We were talking about Elise Reed a while ago and against about the McKenna fight. But uh, Penne, you know, she's well-rounded, better grappler than striker, uh, very hittable, doesn't check leg kicks, um, takedown defense isn't the greatest, but she does play off her back very well. Good submissions, good arm bars. Um, like I said, very good grappler. Uh, and she's 41 years old right now, so... Getting up there, at least read though. Good striker, good volume. Takedown defense isn't the greatest. If she is on her back, she doesn't really know what to do. She can get um, controlled. Um, a lot of her opponents also get into full mount when she's on her back too. So that's something that's not great. Um, but yeah, this is, I mean, lower level fight for both girls. Um, they both have their advantages. Elise, uh, Elise is going to be the better striker. Jessica is going to be the better grappler. But um, I'm just going to go with Reed. Um, she's 10 years younger, Jessica Penne. You know, she's got a shot here, maybe first or second round submission if she can get the fight to the mat. But if she can't get the fight to the mat, she's going to lose this fight. Um, I Unless Elise Reed does something stupid, which, again, that's not out of the question. We've seen her do some interesting things in some of her uh, fights before. But I'm uh, going to go with youth here. And I'm going to go with Reed to win. I'm going to say by decision. But uh, I think Penny submissions live, to be honest. I think it can happen. But don't blame anybody taking a shot on Penny. But the thing is, she's 41 years old. Ooh, that's that's tough. It's tough. Even though uh, Elise Reed, it's a 10-year difference. And I'm not saying Elise Reed is going to be uh, holding a belt soon. But I think she gets this one done. Probably by decision, like I said. But wouldn't shock me if it's the other way around. Third woman's fight of the night in a row. Let's see if they change that up because that's going to be a snooze fest for the <laughs> while. Uh, as Cody would say, Jose Lynn Edwards or Jocelyn versus Tamaris Vidal. Edwards is a solid striker. She's got good kicks. She throws a ton of kicks uh, up the middle. She stays at range very well. She has shown some good uh, wrestling as of late. Pretty good takedowns. Her takedown defense, though, isn't the greatest, but she does have um if she is if she has her back up against the cage um she does do a little bit better with her takedown defense but in open space she gets taken down pretty easily um 
she's got good cardio and durable too. Vidal, she's a pretty good grappler herself. She does have good submissions on the mat. Her striking is just okay. She does have power in her hands, but it's very sloppy, um, kind of low volume. But she is pretty tough. Um, I don't want to say she has a little bit of quit in her, but um, she could. She does slow down as the fight goes on as well. First round, she's always going to be a little dangerous, and, and then she does fade. Um, both girls are coming in on a two-fight losing losing streak. I will say Edwards is fighting the better competition and probably should have beat Nora in that fight. And I'm going with Edwards here. She's just, I think she's the better fighter overall. Uh, she should be able to stay safe early. Um, she might lose round one, but I think she'll win rounds two and three very easily. She'll get those takedowns if she needs to. She's going to be better, more volume on the feet, and she's going to win a decision. So pretty confident in Edwards here. It's weird to say, but this is a fight that she should win nine out of ten times, honestly. So give me Edwards to win by decision. That's how I see it. Next one, we got Brad Katona versus uh, Jean. Sumoto and Katona, solid striker with good volume, uh, very durable, good cardio. He does have some wrestling he can use. He's got pretty decent takedowns. Not very, um, you know, doesn't really have like that finishing ability, but he likes to stand in the pocket, uh, good body shots, all that good stuff. He, and he's kind of small for the division, but luckily for him, he's fighting someone a little bit smaller, or not a little bit smaller, but just as small. Uh, but Matsumoto, well-rounded guy, good takedowns. Um, good grappling, good striking. He's durable. He's very explosive on the feet. He can be taken down. We did see him against uh, Dan Argetta get taken down, I think, like seven or eight times, something crazy, until he got the uh, guillotine choke. Um, but that was a good comeback. So, like I said, very dangerous on the mat with uh, submissions. Very dangerous on the feet, too. But going with Matsumoto here, um, I think he can win a decision, landing the better shots, because Katona is uh, hittable, too. Um and I think he's more dangerous. Like Katona needs to win a decision. That's how he wins. He's not going to get a finish. I think Matsumoto can win by KO. I think he can win by sub. And I think he can win by decision. So Matsumoto is the pick. I will say by decision. But it wouldn't shock me if he does get like a club and sub or something like that. Maybe he lands a good shot on Katona as well. So gonna go. I'm going to go decision, though. I think he gets this one done. Pretty confident in that one. Maybe medium confidence. Next one, Mateus Nikolaou versus Asu Omobayev and uh, Nikolaou. Very good technical striker. He's very uh, patient. He does, he's a very good counter striker as well. He does have good wrestling and grappling, but we haven't really seen it too much. He likes to keep it on the feet. Very good takedown defense. Sometimes he can stay at range and circle the cage, not really do too much. But lately, he's been getting knocked out. Um, he got knocked out against Alex Perez. Pretty bad knockout. Brandon Roy Val was able to get that knee. Pretty bad knockout there, too. But, um, like I said, very technical striker. He does have good grappling as well. Omabayev, though, well-rounded guy. He does have good striking, uh, good wrestling, good grappling, good top control when he does get the fight to the mat. Cardio is good, durable. Um, yeah, he's just good everywhere. And this is an interesting fight. And... I haven't really liked what I saw from Nikolaou, and I'm liking what I see from Alma Bayev. Now I know Nikolaou is fighting, you know, top of the top of the uh, division guys, and he got knocked out twice, which isn't a good look. But you know, this is going to be a, a step up for Asu. But I think he can do this. Like he's well rounded enough, so maybe if the striking isn't going his way, he can try to go for some grappling. If the grappling is not going his way, maybe he stays on on the feet. Like I think he can change it up. He dictates where this fight goes. And uh, Mateus is just going to have to accept whether it's going to be on the feet or on the mat. So give me Oma Bayev to win. I'm going to say by decision, but it wouldn't shock me if Asu catches him on the feet because, you know, Mateus been knocked out twice. Um, they were bad knockouts, but and not to say Oma Bayev is like dangerous, like uh, Roy Vala and Perez, but I, he can get a knockout too. So I'll say Oma Bayev by decision, but this will be a fun fight. I think, um, yeah, it could play out very close to main card time. Darren, the damage Elkins versus Daniel Panetta. And yeah, both these guys, I want to say Elkins is 40. Okay. And then we have uh, Pineda is 39. So I knew I was going to say they're like 38, 39, but they're the same age, basically. Uh, been around forever. Both guys have a lot of miles on them. 
But Elkins is a grinder, good wrestling, good grappling, uh, good takedowns. He's a chain wrestler. He's going to get you down if he gets you up against the cage. Um, his striking isn't the greatest. He can be hittable on the feet, uh, but very durable. He does take a lot of da uh, damage, no, no pun intended. But cardio is top notch, and he's going to keep, he's going to stay in there. Pineda, though, he is super dangerous too in the first round, but then he starts to fade. But he's got very like dangerous striking early with power, very good grappling with good submissions early too. But like I said, his biggest issue is the cardio. He does slow down. There is some, like a few fights though where he does go the distance. Um, he went to distance with Alex Caceres, which is crazy to me. He also went to decision with Nathaniel Wood, which was also crazy. So the last two fights, he went to decision, but he wasn't doing anything in like the second and third round enough to win. So like his danger is the first round. And after that, he just kind of like hopes to stay alive. But um, close fight, close to a pick -em. I'm going to ride with Elkins one last time time maybe not one last time but let's just say one more time um you know he's 40 years old he's slowing down but i can't trust pinetta after the first round and i think elkins can survive the first round uh maybe get a takedown himself wear down pinetta and uh yeah i gotta go with elkins here i i think he gets it done uh rounds two round three whether it's gonna be by submission whether it's gonna be by a knockout, he's just going to grind and grind and grind and grind until Pineda basically gives up because Pineda doesn't go, really go to decision. Like I said, I know his last two fights he did, but every time he went to decision, he's lost seven times. So this guy doesn't want to go to decision, and if he does, more than likely, he's going to lose. So Pineda needs to finish, and I don't think he's going to be able to finish Elkins. So give me Elkins to win. I'm going to say third round finish but wouldn't shock me if it, if it does sneak into the decision because Elkins, you know, like I said, he might be slowing down too. he's 40, but I think he's going to have more cardio in the second and third round for sure. Next one's going to be Brady. He stand versus Jake Hadley uh, Brady. He stand uh, the one of the guys that I can never pick. Right. But he's a very good wrestler. He's got very good takedowns. He's also kind of like a chain wrestler. He wants to get you down, grapple very good. He's a very good grappler. Good top control. Striking is meh, uh, nothing fantastic, but he's very tough. He does get rocked. It seems like he gets rocked once a fight, but he's got good recoverability, um, good cardio too, and he just out grinds and out cardios his opponents more times than that. So, but Hadley though, he's pretty well-rounded, good boxing, decent striking, good power. He does have good uh, grappling. He does play off his back a little bit too much sometimes. He does, doesn't does have the greatest takedown defense, though. And, um, yeah, but he's dangerous on the feet, though. So we'll see. Um, I'm going to go with Brady. It's probably going to be a bad pick because uh, every time I pick him, he loses, and every time I pick against him, he wins. So I think this is a good f matchup, though, for Brady. I think he can get uh, Hadley down relatively easily and keep him down. Um, Hadley is going to have the advantage on the feet, obviously, but I just, I think Brady is durable enough and he should be able to get those takedowns and win the fight. So give me, he stand to win. I could see a third round finish again, but I'm going to go by decision. Hadley's pretty durable. And I don't think he's been knocked out or finished in his career. No, he's never been. So he almost was against Durden, but that's about it. So give me, he stand to win by decision. This will be a fun fight. Next one, Sumadarji versus Charles Johnson. Good fight here. Sumadarji, let's see, solid striker, good power, very hittable. He does have good vo volume, though. Takedown defense is just okay. And, um, man, he can get hit. He, he, he's, he could take some shots, but, man, the Matt Schnell fight, insane. Um, but he just likes to get subbed. I know this is more so like a club and sub. Um, Tim Elliott was able to get him out of there. I I kind of wouldn't mind anybody going Charles Johnson by sub, but we'll get to that in a second. And Johnson's a solid striker. Takedown defense is pretty good. And um, we've seen him work on that cardio. Uh, but when he does have that cardio issue, more times than not, he's taking the fight on short notice. But 
This one, he isn't. He's durable. I don't think he's ever been knocked out in his career, maybe, and or finished. Never been finished. He's lost six times by decision. But, man, he's been on a little roll. I like what I've seen with him lately. He was able to knock out Joshua Van in the third round, um, beat Jake Hadley, beat Azamat Maxim. So, like, those are three very, very good wins. And um, I think he can beat Sumadarji. I don't want to say relatively easy, but I think he should be able to beat him. So give me Charles Johnson the win. Wouldn't be, would it be a sneaky little play for a Charles Johnson submission? But because Suma Darji, I think he's been subbed like four times, six times. All six of his losses have come by submission. So if you see Charles Johnson, like plus, I would say 600 or more, I would grab it. Because I think that's very live. But give me Charles Johnson the win by um, decision. That's just how he does it. No more times than that. I mean, that third round knockout from Joshua by that he knocked out Joshua Van in. I mean, that was surprising to say the least. But um, he should be the better striker on the feet, more by him. Durability is better. Um, I got to go Charles Johnson for sure. Coming event Rob Font versus Kyler Phillips. And yeah. Rob Font's a very good boxer, good jab. He doesn't really have the greatest KO power. He's been fighting really, really, really tough guys at the top of the Bantamweight division lately, but he's getting up there in age. He's 37 years old. He's taking a lot of damage while fighting those tough guys, but you know his takedown defense isn't great. He is very safe on the mat, though, if he is taken down, but he's very durable. Uh, Kyler Phillips is very well-rounded. He's a very quick striker, very dynamic, uh, good kicks, good knees, good elbows. Um, his takedowns are pretty good. He's got very, very good grappling. He throws a ton of volume on the feet. The only thing that worries me with him is he kind of slows down as the fight goes on. Um, we've seen it in the Hani Barcelos fight. He was slowing down a bit, and that fight was very, very close. To be honest, Hani Barcelos might could have won that fight. Pedro Munoz, though, again, I mean, that's a tough fight for anybody, but again, but if we're just going off of on paper, I got to go Kyler Phillips. And the main reason why is because he's going to have a clear advantage on the mat. I think on the feet, it could be close, but Kyler needs to go for some takedowns and get this fight to the mat. And he should win this fight nine out of 10 times. I mean, that it's, it's easy path to victory for him. We've seen Rob Font get controlled time and time again when he's taken down and Kyler can do the same thing. So give me Kyler Phillips to win. Wouldn't shock me if it goes a decision. Wouldn't shock me if um, maybe Kyler finds a sub, but um, give me Kyler Phillips to win by decision. I think he gets this one done. I'm a little worried though, if the fight does extend into the third round and he's a little gassed, but I think he should get this one done. Main event time. We got Michelle Pereira versus Anthony Hernandez, fluffy, but Pereira is a very explosive striker, well-rounded. Um, he has those crazy jumping knees, Superman punches, uh, back flips off the cage, all that stuff. But he's slowing down with that. He's getting he's he might be getting up there in age. That's why he's slowing down. He's thirty-one, which is crazy. But um, he's looked very good. I mean, he's got a crazy finish against Eor Pretoria. He's got a crazy finish against Ola Zaychuk. Crazy finish against Andre Petrosky. Ever since he went down the middleweight, he's looked very, very, very dangerous, very explosive, and very quick. Hernandez, different style, very good grappler, good wrestling, very durable. Um, he can be hit to the body. We've seen that in the past. And he can slow down a bit, maybe get hurt to the body, but it does have very good cardio. His striking is just okay. Um, he's willing to, you know, stand and bang if need be, but he does want to get this fight to the mat. That's his bread and butter. So it's striker basically versus um, grappler. And I mean, Pereira does have good grappling. He's just a better striker. He And he wants to keep it on the feet. Um, he does have good grappling. So not to say that he's a better grappler, but I think he's safe on the mat. But on the feet, there is a clear advantage. And there's a guy who is way more dangerous. And he's an underdog. And his name is Pereira. So I'm going with Pereira. More dangerous on the feet. I think he can survive on the mat if he is taken down. I know this will be a five-round fight. So it's interesting to see what happens. So the unders would be not a bad play. Um, because I don't know if this fight extends after round three. What Pereira's gas tank will look like. I'm pretty sure Hernandez will be okay for five rounds. But... Pereira is going to be explosive. I'm sure he's going to want to get this fight out of or get 
Fluffy out of there um, before that, but I'm going to go with Pereira. I think he gets a knockout here. He's just too explosive, and um, he can work the body just kind of like what uh, Ola, he did to Ola Zaychuk. Uh, front kick up the middle, hurt him, and then maybe get a, a club and sub or something like that. Maybe not a club and sub, but I, th- I can kind of see it go down like that in a way. Maybe not like 20 seconds into the fight, but uh, maybe like in the f- late first or early second. So, Michelle, by KO, that's my pick. But that is it. We only had 11 fights, so it went kind of quick. Uh, appreciate everybody hanging out with me for 30 minutes. I went, tried to go as quick as possible for the, so that way you guys aren't bored and, uh, and we'll kind of watch most of my video at least. But uh, please hit that like button for me and subscribe if you haven't. Obviously, check out my Patreon. Uh, uh, Defend Your Units will be Wednesday night, as always, with Cody from Blood Money MMA Bets. So check us out then. We'll go over all this again. And Saturday before the fights, we'll be live again with a couple people probably. And uh, we'll go over our uh, best bets, what we're looking at, final thoughts, good stuff like that. So definitely check us out two hours before the fights on Saturday. So appreciate it again. Um, See you next time. Happy fight night.